We welcome all of you joining us online and in person this evening. Tonight we are celebrating our Monday Thursday service and we gather to remember the Last Supper that Jesus shared with his disciples. As you hear words from scripture, and please imagine that you are sitting in the upper room with Jesus and the disciples. Hear what Jesus chooses to teach in his last moments on earth. Tomorrow is Good Friday, the day that marks when Jesus was crucified. And although we do not have a service tomorrow, I encourage you to leave this evening and to allow yourself to sit with the darkness of the cross. Absorb the depth of Jesus' love for us, that he would die an innocent man at the hands of our sin. Yeah. On Sunday, we will celebrate that Jesus is risen and that through our faith in him, we know that our sins are forgiven and that we have everlasting life. As we gather this evening, please join me in a word of prayer. Lord Jesus, we gather together this evening to sit around the table with you and the disciples. Help us to step into the words and the images of scripture. May we symbolically take off our shoes with the disciples and allow you to wash our feet. Lord, wash away the bitterness, the anger, the hopelessness, and the hurts that we have picked up along the road of our lives. Move us by the power of your humble service and stir us to be more like you in the way that we engage with the world. May your Holy Spirit move inside each of us tonight and continue to work to unite us as the body of Christ alive in the world. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So I invite you at this time to join together in a couple of hymns, the first of which is In Remembrance of Me. For the lyrics, they are included in your bulletins. And I invite you to sing out.
let's uh, look to the Lord with a word of prayer. Oh God, please speak to the deep places of our hearts. May your scripture come alive to us, we pray. In Christ's name, amen. Well, when you came to church this evening on this Monday, Thursday service, how would you have reacted if the usher said to you, take off your shoes? My guess is that most of us would be a bit uncomfortable. Yep. We're all dressed up for church, and it doesn't seem right to kick off our shoes. And you can imagine all of us here with our shoes off. Some people, especially children, uh, might feel really free with their, with their shoes off. Many, many of us, in years gone by, would go barefoot in the summer, spend time at the beach with our shoes off. But I remember going to Korea many, many times, and something I learned was that I, I wore shoes that uh, you could slip on and off very easily, because we, many times a day we go to these various churches and we'd have to tie our shoes, and I learned after the first couple times that slip-ons are the way to go in that part of the world. <laughs> if any of you ever went to an Amy Grant concert when she was singing, she was a contemporary Christian artists, uh, often she would start her, her concerts and she'd slip her shoes off. She just felt more comfortable. Many of us kick off our shoes after working hard all day when we go home and it feels good to relax because sometimes our feet get tired. Feet are really amazing parts of our anatomy. They help us to get places. They help us keep our balance. For dancers, they help to express art and coordination. We tap our feet to the beat of music. Mm -hmm. Our feet take a lot of punishment at times. A number of years ago, uh, we had a guy in our church named Dave Kirby, and Dave was very active in our church, and then later he and his wife moved to San Juan Capistrano, and, and Dave liked to walk, and one day he called me and said, Jim, let's go out to lunch. I want to take you to lunch. So I drove down to San Juan Capistrano, and he said, uh, Jim, what do you like to eat? And I said, well, you know, I really like fish. He said, well, I know a great little fish restaurant. I think we can walk there. So I said, okay, that sounds good. So oh. after a couple miles, I said, uh, and I'm in my dress shoes. I said, Dave, how far is this? Where is this restaurant? He said, well, it's a nice restaurant in, in Dana Point. <laughs> <laughs> I said, you're kidding me, but he wasn't. We walked six miles one way, and I remember getting blisters, my toes, I mean, I, I didn't have walking shoes on, and I said, Dave, please call your wife and have her pick us up. And she did. You know, sometimes we don't appreciate our feet till we get a blister, do we? You know, there are many references uh, to feet and sandals in the Bible. I was surprised how many references there are. And foot washing ranked high in the Middle East as a, as a way of, of showing hospitality and goodwill. In Genesis 18, uh, verse 4, Abraham said to his guests, Please let a little water be brought and, and wash your feet and rest yourselves under the tree, and I will bring a piece of bread that you may refresh yourselves. You know, uh, open sandals on a hot uh, muddy, dusty roads made washing a particular, a very practical thing to do when entering a person's tent or house, and, and you would feel refreshed. Some of us were, uh, were at the International Congregational Fellowship meeting in, uh, in Greece, in Corfu, it was in 2005, and I remember we, we followed the footsteps of Paul. We went to Corinth and these various places, and it was hot, and uh, we went to Terra Terra where uh, Lydia had started the Philippian church and it was 100 degrees that day. And they said, here, sit down. And there was a, a stream there. We, we kicked off our shoes and we put our feet in that cold water. And it was so refreshing. I don't know if any of you have ever done that. I don't know if it cools your blood as it goes through our bodies or our feet or what, but you know, it was really refreshing. I was thinking how, uh, uh, Isaiah 52, when he wrote these words, How beautiful are the feet of those who bring glad, glad tidings of peace. And then Handel took this verse 
and composed a beautiful song in his work in the Messiah. Remember Moses in the burning bush. God said to him in Exodus 3, 5, Take off your sandals, for the place where you are standing is holy ground. In the New Testament, a woman anoints Jesus' feet with her precious ointment, which served as a reminder of his eventual burial. Jesus tells his disciples that if their message is not received, they are not, and they're not welcome to the town, they shake off the dust from their feet, and they leave. They move on. And in tonight's scripture, this most holy of nights, John records for us, beginning in verse 3, Jesus knew that the Father had put all things under his power, and that he had come from God and was returning to God. So he got up from the meal, took off his outer clothing, and wrapped a towel around his waist, after that, he poured water into a basin and began to wash his disciples' feet, drying them with a towel that was wrapped around him. Jesus began to wash their feet, these feet of his followers who had walked many, many miles with him. Remember, they didn't have cars or buses or even bicycles in those days. You either rode a horse or a donkey or a camel or you walked, and most people walked. They walked many distances with Jesus, and, and here we see Jesus washing their feet. Old, calloused feet, young, smooth feet, smelly, dusty feet. Jesus washed them all. Perhaps as he held each of his disciples' feet, he thought about where they had been, walking along the seashore, climbing up the hillsides. They had been together fishing on the Sea of Galilee. They walked in the countryside as well as in the city. These feet would take them to faraway places to preach the good news of salvation. These feet would carry the disciples to those in need of, of healing and comfort, those in need of preaching and teaching. They would challenge others to follow in the ways of their Lord. I'd encourage you in the next couple days to read chapter, John chapters 13 through 21. It's full of truth. Uh, you see the disciples' humanity, their ups and downs, their successes and failures, their doubts and demonstrations of faith kind of come shining through these verses. In tonight's passage, we go from sharing of the meal to the washing of the feet, from the empty cup and plate into the stillness and darkness of Gethsemane. We see the disciples walking away from Jesus, as they learn of Judas' betrayal and Peter's denial, and we wonder to ourselves, how would we respond if we were in their shoes? The scripture tonight focuses on the disciples sharing a meal together. They did this many times before, but tonight was different. They were celebrating the Passover, and Jesus said, this is my body broken for you. This is the cup of the new covenant in my blood. This mystery begins, the mystery begins and Jesus moves from the table to the role of the suffering servant, taking their dirty feet in his hands, connecting with each of them in an intimate and personal way. He pours the water out and cleans their feet. It almost has an image of baptism, doesn't it? In verse 6, we read, Jesus came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus replied, you do not realize now what I am doing, but later you will understand. No, said Peter, you shall never wash my feet. Jesus answered, unless I wash you, you have no part with me. Then, Lord, Simon Peter replied, not just my feet, but my hands and my head as well. You see, Peter longed to be closer to his Lord. He wanted to be cleansed. Jesus knew that Peter would deny him. He knew that, that he would, would run away just like the other disciples. They would be carried away. Their feet would carry them away from God, for they feared for their lives. They ran away after Jesus was crucified. But after the resurrection, they again walked in his ways. 
In fact, all of them died martyrs' deaths for their faith, except John, who was, ended up being banished to the island of Patmos. Jesus reminds his followers that if they want to get closer to God, they needed to wash one another's feet. They needed to be willing to serve one another as Jesus, the suffering servant, served them. Jesus got their attention by washing their feet. And it didn't stop there. He got up, he laid aside his towel, and led them to Gethsemane. You know, this washing of feet is so symbolic, isn't it? Yeah. It really makes a statement. Uh, there was a guy in our, that uh, we, a missionary that we supported for many years named Hank Jones. And Hank was, uh, uh, had retired from uh, Marines. He had worked his way up in the Marine Corps. And uh, after putting in 27 years, he retired and devoted his, his life to missions. He started an organization called uh, Spiritual Overseers Service. And he'd go to various places in the world. This, it's still going on today, uh, this organization that he started. But he'd go to Tibet, he'd go to Vietnam, he'd go to uh, war zones and just share the love of God. And he was, I believe it was in Pakistan. And he weren't allowed to necessarily preach the gospel, but you know what he did? He went to this remote village and started washing people's feet. I mean, for the whole day, for a couple days, he just washed their feet as an act of a servant. And really, it really touched those villagers' heart. I think about when Jesus did that, it must have really touched their hearts as well. On that holy night, Jesus led them into the darkness. He led them into the shocking reality of his pending suffering and death. In the darkness of Gethsemane, Jesus prayed. In the darkness... Jesus relied on God's promise as he hung on the cross and said, it is finished. Tonight we will share a meal together. Our feet and our hearts are washed. Tonight after leaving the church, we go out into the darkness. But this darkness is not without hope. This can be a darkness of solitude, a darkness of remembrance, a darkness of prayer, a darkness of repentance a darkness of commitment. Tonight I would encourage you to take your shoes off, not necessarily literally, but figuratively. Be willing to wash one another's feet. Be willing to serve one another and be served. Be willing to go into the world of darkness, bringing the hope and light of the gospel. Amen. We're now going to have just a minute or two of silence, and then we will uh, share the bread and the cup. If you are visiting tonight, our church practices open communion, so anybody who believes that Jesus Christ is their Lord and Savior is welcome to take communion with us. And we're also doing communion a little bit differently than we typically do. Instead of passing out communion, we're going to invite you forward, and Pastor Jim will tear off a piece of the bread and hand it to you, and then you may dip it in the cup. 
Um, so obviously do not wait for everybody. <laughs> Take communion as you come through the line. Um, and we look forward to breaking the bread together. Think about Christians all around the world celebrating communion tonight. You know how there's a, a sense of unity. Some people are in little huts somewhere. Some are on open fields. Some are in high-rise um, skyscrapers. People all over the world. Some are meeting underground. But we do this in remembrance of the Lord. Jesus, on the day in which he was betrayed, he took the bread and he broke it. And he said, this is my body broken for you. Do this in remembrance of Thank you. 
stand and sing the old rugged cross. plate in the back if everybody wants to put an offering back there, but any, the offering will be uh, going toward the diaconate fund to help people in our own church that have needs. Some people have uh, kind of fallen in some rough times, so we do what we can to help. Now may the Lord bless you and keep you. 
May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift his counts upon you and give you his peace, both now and forever.